five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from New York. And Harlem as well. Hey, everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go from now until midnight tonight. And hello, everybody. How, how are you? How's, how's, how's your day gone? Okay, good. Mine just nothing happened. I don't go out anymore, although that's pretty good in this day and age because uh, going out, you could get that virus. You know, it's going around, a little little flu that's going around. I, just, I was listening to Trump, and he was saying it's just a little flu. It's just a tiny little, little you know, uh, people, more people die of the flu every year than are going to die of this thing. Well, not we don't know yet. Um, they had a little flu back in... Uh, World War One, and it was called the Spanish flu, and it decimated, let's see here, I'm trying to remember, uh, 50 million people? Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, it killed 50 million people, so, you know, uh, Trump, you can take it and put it where the sun don't shine, because I'm telling you right now, you know. You know what I can't figure out? I cannot figure out this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, YouTube people, the, the, this YouTube thing, okay? I've been using YouTube now for how many years? And it's fine. It's great. It's a free way for me to put out a live uh, um, uh, thing here. Uh, let me see here. Are we are we are we brought are we brought hey, for Jesse? me to? Oh, there we go. Oh, we oh that oh there is me. Yes, I I am. For some reason, that wasn't uh, wasn't going. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. So I uh, I uh, really uh, uh, really like uh, uh, YouTube. I mean, it's been pretty good. So in the last couple of weeks, I I put in a big push for everybody to kind of subscribe to me so I could go over a thousand. And when you go over a thousand, you get to monetize your programs. So I thought, well, hey, that's not bad, you know. I mean, so far I've made o almost six dollars. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, uh, um, uh, I I've been, uh, you know, uh, having it monetized, but every time it goes up, they put up these little warnings: may not be monetized because of the. What, it, what the program contains or whatever because it doesn't meet certain guidelines. And then you, you put in a request to have it reviewed, and about, uh, oh, 75% of the time when I have it reviewed, they, they say, yeah, well, you're wrong. Okay, go ahead. You know, you can be monetized. But then it's too late because it's a day later after the show is run and people are finished watching it on the, on the Internet. So I don't really realize the full monetization that I could get. And what's strange is I put up two different versions of the show. Some people wonder why. There's one version is the one that uh, YouTube puts up after the show is over, okay? And the other one is the one I record. In fact, I'm recording it right now. And uh, that's a clean version without the, uh, I'm not talking about clean or dirty, but it's a clean version without all the, all the spots and commercials and stuff that are at the top, promos that are at the top of the show. So I put up both of them. And sometimes one can be monetized and the other one can't, and they're absolutely identical programs. And it makes no sense to me whatsoever, and it's completely arbitrary, and I'm suddenly getting to feel, I don't know, that there's something really wrong here. Uh, let, me, let me explain to you. Um, on this program, we talk a lot about, among other things, Donald Trump and what a terrible uh, scum he is. I didn't say scum. Um, what a terrible scum he is. And um, maybe that's what they don't like. Maybe that they're afraid advertisers won't like that, won't want to be associated with a program that has political um, uh, uh, content. Uh, and maybe it's the fact that I don't like Trump, and therefore they think advertisers will not like that either, and so therefore uh, they don't monetize me. 
I, I think that may have something to do with it because I've had nights where this show was like clean, clean, clean. I think maybe a four-letter word went in and out somewhere during the show. But on the, for the most part, it was just, you know, squeaky clean. And then I go back and it says, cannot be monetized. And you go, what? Then I go, I request review, request a review, view, <laughs> request a review of this determination by a human being rather than a machine. And they look at it and they go, yeah, it's not anything to be worried about. But this goes on all the time, and I'm getting tired every night of asking for reviews of the programs. And then by the time they, they get around to reviewing it, the show is long past, and uh, I'm not going to make any money off of it. So what I'm doing is I'm monetizing the live show as it's going out live before they can say, before the show is over and they say, we can't monetize it, all right? And therefore, I will get credit for all the people that are listening while the show is on. So if you see a commercial before the show when you start, that's the reason why. But I'm just, I'm fed up with that, you know. I'm fed up with a lot of stuff because, you know, this is this is not an easy thing for an old guy like me to be doing. And um, I figured out a way to maybe uh, I've also been somewhat disappointed in the programs lately. I you know, I and that's just me. Uh, um, I just feel that uh, well, no new people are calling. OK, and I appreciate the people who do call. Don't if you're, you know, one of my regular callers, please don't don't take that to heart. Uh, I, I, I really like what you do for me, and I thank you so much for it. Uh, but um, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing every night, and it doesn't change, and nothing, uh, nothing freshens up. So I kept thinking about ways to freshen up the program, one of which would be to turn off my camera because I'm getting to look really ugly in my old age. Uh, uh, another way... Uh, I've, I, I came up with an idea. See, what happened was Damien decided he didn't want to do a show anymore uh, on weekdays. I only want to do it once a week. He wanted to do it on Monday. Now, there's no other shows there before him or after him, so he can do whatever he wants. So he can go on late, go on early or whatever. But I'm like a, a foolish idiot, have been going on every night at, uh, at 10 o'clock, because that's what I'm used to. And then the other night, I was, the day I was thinking, hmm, there's no show on before me, so I could probably go on any time after that that I want to, uh, because there, there's no nothing more that I have to follow. And so I said to myself, you know, if I just started the show a half hour late, then I would only have to do an hour and a half show which in uh, uh, internet terms, in podcast terms, is a more reasonable amount of time anyway because nobody wants to listen to a two-hour show on, on, uh, on a podcast. So here's what I figured I would do. Is it maybe starting next week? I haven't decided yet, but maybe starting next week, I will start the show at 10.30. And then I will run, maybe if I have an interview, fine. If I don't, I'll go directly to the phones. Uh, but if I have an interview, I'll play that up until about a little, well, 11 o'clock. And then for the next hour, we'll have the citizen panel. I think it will improve the program on a couple of levels. I think that it will encourage more people to call because a lot of people, I think, say, you know, if I call, I feel like I have to stay there for an hour and a half. All right. But they feel they only have to stay for an hour then maybe all that will kind of change. So I'm, I've been, I'm thinking about starting next week, um, uh, if there is a next week, uh, I'll explain that in a second, uh, of, um, of, of having this show uh, uh, go on at, uh, at, not, at 10.30 and start at 10.30. I, I don't think anybody would complain about that. I think that it would be a lot easier listening for a lot of people who don't want to have to slog through two hours of program when they listen to it. The ideal time for the show would be an hour, but I'll do an hour and a half and, and see how that works. But this will give me the opportunity to uh, put all my effort okay, into that hour that we do, will do the uh, citizen panel. Uh, I find myself starting to fade out about an hour and a half in. Um, also, I, I think it might encourage other people to call. Uh, 
because they won't have to devote themselves to as much time if they do call. Uh, and uh, so I, I, uh, the, uh, I'm, I think that's probably going to be what I'm going to do next week. I'll try it for a while. If it doesn't work, I won't do it. You know, I'll go back to my old uh, time slot. But uh, I like your thinking on this, and if you get a chance, uh, uh, give me a... Uh, oh, somebody just said the uh, Spanish flu uh, was 500 million people worldwide. Okay, about a third of the planet's population. Too bad it didn't get the Drumpf family over there in Germany or wherever that's they were from. Uh, anyway, um, so that that's what I plan on doing. Okay, I, I and if you don't like the idea, let me know. You know, I mean, uh, uh, um, I certainly like to accommodate the audience. But this way, if I have an interview or something, we'll play that, and then we'll get on with the citizen panel about uh, eleven o'clock. We'll do a good solid hour of hard hitting talk, and then I leave, and nobody gets hurt. Okay. Okay. Um, in fact, I even you know we have that thing, the billboard up in the, on the web page where it says all the different shows and they flop over and so on. I already have a new one made up that says ten thirty. So I went all that trouble today. So maybe I should do it. Anyway, we'll give it a try. Maybe next week. I don't know how much of next week I'm going to be on though. I just got word today that I'm going to now have my operation again. Next Tuesday. It's it's like last Tuesday was a run through. <laughs> and this is going to be the actual final, um, um, op uh, the opening show, as it were. Uh, so I will not be doing a show Tuesday. That's for damn sure. I'm not going in there. You know, who knows when I'm going in there. If I, if I went in there, if I go in there the same time they have me going in this time, I wouldn't get out of there till 9, 30, 10 o'clock anyway. And I'm not coming on the air here right after being under anesthesia, even if I start at 10, 30. So I, there will be no show on Tuesday, okay? There may be a show Wednesday, but I want to see how I feel, okay? If I'm still feeling groggy, or I'm still feeling out of it, uh, or I'm feeling uh, a great deal of fatigue, then I'm just going to pass up doing the show, okay? Uh, and I know you will all understand, once I get past this, and then I get past that stupid trial that we're doing, um, which I, I'm getting fed up with that whole deal, too, uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll have at it. Anyway, yeah, be that as it may. Hi. Um... Yeah, I look better with the hat on. I was looking at me with the hat off last night. Now, I could scare little children if, if you had any. Um, and uh, uh, pants are getting a little tight on me. I got I got. Uh, but it's because I'm taking this stuff for the neuropathy, which I think is putting weight on me. Not a lot. I mean, as you see, I've still kept off a lot of, look, kept off a lot of what I, uh, what I you know, what I had on, so I'm fine. Okay. And, um, you know, I may have gained back about maybe maybe 20 pounds. Well, 15 pounds, maybe 20 pounds, something like that. 15, I'd say. Um, but, and I will lose it again. I'll just go back on a diet. I'm, I'm still on the diet. I'm still rigidly on the diet, but I don't seem to be losing. I seem to be gaining. And I think it's because of the medicine. It's also because of the fatigue being caused by the radiation. And I just can't, you know, I just can't get moving enough. So after this is all over, I'm back in the gym, and I'm going to do the whole thing. So what have you. Anyway, I just want to, uh, you know, we were playing last night. We uh, played uh, the Cat House for Dogs, which was a, uh, a, a, a thing we did with a guy named Joey Skaggs, who did what we would call, I think the best thing to, way to describe it, uh, was a, um, um, uh, a hoax a hoax that there was such a thing as a cat house for dogs where you could go and if your male dog was really horny, uh, there were all these bitches. And uh, don't please, don't demonetize me for that word because I'm using it in its proper context. Um, uh, uh, he, 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 get, he has these bitches and then they would have sex with the, uh, the male dogs. I mean, none of it really went on, but we produced what was a real reality for his hoax, okay? 
by doing a, a documentary on it. Anyway, so that that was that was last night, and that was on Midnight Blue, a show that I did back in the uh, in the seventies uh, uh, here in New York. And I, looking back on it, pretty some pretty good stuff. I mean, we we did we were very creative and we were very good at what we did. Um, and one of the things that, that that I saw that was also on this tape that I'm expunging from that tape because screw the guy who claims he has a copyright on it, he doesn't. Um, uh, was an interview that I found with. A very young, and you will see, a very young, you don't see me there, but you would have also seen a very young Alex Bennett, too. A very young Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. And this interview became famous uh, because he answered a couple of sexual questions in it. Um, but this is Arnold. He was, he, just, he, he was out promoting the film Pumping Iron, which was a documentary done about him. So at this point, I think, Maybe he did a movie, I think Hercules in New York or something like that it was called. I think he may have done a dramatic turn. But basically this documentary was the thing that got America knowing the guy and this, this really incredible, incredible muscle guy. Uh, and so I thought I would just play it for you just for the heck of it. Why not? You know? Um, and we could take a look at it and see what Arnold Schwarzenegger looked like. This had to be, I think, 1975, if I'm not mistaken. I may be mistaken, but about 1975. Look how young he looks. And uh, listen to what he has to say, too. Why do you think you were drawn to this? Well, you know, there is no definite answer for that because uh, as, as soon as you get into psychology and all that, you ha only can assume certain things and uh, there are no facts and I only can come up with the things that uh, maybe had a, some kind of a need for feeling strong or some kind of a need uh, psychologically for building a certain kind of an armor around the body, a protection or so, or a certain need of being re more recognized as I was and maybe being recognized by having a different body than everybody else on the street has. So though you can come up with hundreds of different reasons why. You really, I really don't know. I just know that I was always very physically oriented and I was very much into sports because my whole family was very sports oriented. But I don't know why necessarily uh, weight training. I think it's as much a reason as uh, somebody maybe just picks, uh, gets into uh, being an MC or a commentator or anything, mm -hmm. you know, you just pick a certain thing that you feel comfortable with and that you think you can really uh, achieve 100% of your potential. What are the marks of a, of a good body, I mean, for competition and so on? Uh, when I look at competitions such as you join, I, I see a bunch of muscles bulging, mm -hmm. but I'm not a judge. What do judges look for? I think that you will be a good judge too. I think everybody who never saw a physique contest is a good judge because we tried it out many times and uh, I think that you will know right away what is a perfectly developed physique and what is not perfectly developed by just looking that, that the proportions are right. I mean that's the main thing in, in bodybuilding is not to be the biggest guy and to have maybe 23 inch arms and then maybe no calves or so. You instantly, even you, will see that there's something wrong with the physique. So I think the main thing is the proportions and the symmetry of the body, you know. Size mean, doesn't, means a lot, but it isn't the main thing, you know. It's the symmetry, the proportions, muscle size, muscle separations, the definition of the muscles and the quality, how you pose, how you uh, present the whole thing and, uh, and so on. All these things are very important in bodybuilding. You say in there that, that doing this kind of feeling the, 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 your muscles bloat up and get bigger is, is better than coming, as you put it. Is, as is good. It, is, it, is it kind of a sexual rush for you? Uh, no. When I say it's as good as coming, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a, it's a sexual thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we know that, uh, you know, climax in sex is the supreme feeling that we have, and mm -hmm. the pump in the gymnasium is the supreme feeling that the bodybuilder can have. And the same is in, in running. You get this certain high in long distance running or in swimming. And so in every sport, you get a certain high. There's a certain point where you get really high. 
and that is the best feeling you can have for this particular sport and the, the, the pump is like that in bodybuilding you know, it feels fantastic and it's something that you work for because you know that the pump makes you grow makes you bigger and all that which is the ideal thing in bodybuilding and that's why I compared it to a climax and uh, having sex because that's what people can relate to hopefully because for most people hopefully it is the best feeling that they have experienced in the film pumping iron there's a there's a there's a another bodybuilder who is being rehearsed in mm -hmm. his routine for competition does that routine have a lot to do with winning very much because you can have the best uh, physique and if you can't show it if you can't show what you have to the judges and to the audience you cannot win it's impossible because if you have a terrific developed back you have to be able to flex it in a way to show this the terrific developed back, you know, and the same is with your thighs and calves and abdominals. And then the way you move from one pose to the next, it shows you the way, how graceful you are. And it's a kind of a neat thing if you see a guy who weighs 240 pounds to move gracefully you know, and to go through his routine, which is a, usually a three minute routine. And I took ballet lessons for that, you know, I took uh, how to move gracefully. And so it's very important to do that. We're not going to have to be treated for the next 30 years to Arnold Schwarzenegger ads on the back of comic books, are we? You never have to worry about that. I mean, I, <laughs> I, a long time ago I had the chance to do that, to have advertisements go in the comic books and so, but I made the decision that I, it was much more important for me to do things uh, with dignity and with, with class in my career, and that I was successful in for the last few years, and I'm sure I will be successful in, in the future because of that. You know, to do everything I do is with class and not just for the money. Well, remembering the back of those old comic books, look at them, folks. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger, hero of the beach. <laughs> And there he was, ladies and gentlemen. That was about 1975. And by the way, uh, to you out there at YouTube watching us, you did not see Arnold's extremities. He had a little clown nose was on there, covering up the vital parts. Okay, all right. So we're we're so you just go ahead, go ahead. You're going to give me a, a no monetization thing anyway. Just pass it now. Okay? All right. Good. Anyway, that was Arnold way back when, and uh, who knew what he would become, you know? Who knew uh, that this guy would become probably one of the most successful people in the movies? I mean, he was major box office. This was He was one of the biggest stars in the world. Uh, and then he became the, um, uh, the governor of the state of California. Who would have known that would have happened, Okay. And uh, all, all when I was interviewing him, then he had done as a say pumping iron and held the title of Mister Universe, uh, and uh, was a major major competitor in that field. So uh, great to see him. Anyway, let me see here. I guess we can get going here. I guess we can open the lines. Who knows what's going to happen? Here's where the show goes downhill from here. Okay, mainly because it's when I start falling apart let me see here let's see what, 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 what oops ooh, that was last night's caller all right let me turn this down so that when somebody does call uh it won't blast you out okay so now the lines are the lines are open yes uh and i'm ready to talk to you out there um are if you don't know how to call us uh just go over to gabnet.net over on the right-hand side of the page, it tells you exactly how to call us, using Skype, or you even can use a phone number that's there and call us by phone, although we haven't a lot, had a lot of people using that phone number lately. And I've been thinking about, I pay, what, 18 bucks every three months for that phone number, uh, that I might do away with it because there's nobody really uses it that, that much. I think we have one caller who used to use it a lot, and he's not calling the show anymore, so... We probably don't need that phone number, but uh, I'll, I'll, I just paid for it again, so what the hell, you know. So our, uh, but Skype us here at GabNet Live, GabNet Live, J-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E, -E, and uh, I'm now just waiting for somebody to call the program. See, if I start even two minutes before the 30-minute mark, nobody calls. And I strongly suspect that those people 
who do call me after this point weren't listening to the first half hour. So, and they, so they missed Arnold Schwarzenegger. But didn't he? Did he? Did he look like he had muscles, man? That guy was. He was that. He was a. Uh, he was a freak show, <laughs> really. Uh, man, all that later on turned to fat because they had some pictures of him years later where it had all turned to fat. I think he's gone back in the gym and kind of tightened a lot of that up. Uh, but, you know, he's not a young guy anymore, and it's a hard thing to kind of keep up. Anyway, here comes here comes Phil. Um, let me see here. Uh, yes, okay, there we go. There he, there he is. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening? Hey, uh, I had a had a nice day. I am uh, now an investor in the stock market. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's my. There. Let me turn that off. Yes, please. Uh, that wasn't an intentional thing. I just grabbed a piece of paper off the keyboard. Uh, but um, yeah, I have a. Uh, it's very hard to see Char uh, Charles Schwab account, mm -hmm. and, and uh, but I, I gave him a check, and I can't uh, use the account until the sixth of March. Mm -hmm. I guess they want the check to clear. Yeah, well, I think that in your case, uh, they, they better it's good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. So, what did yeah. you invest in anything? Or are they just going to do the investing for you? Uh, well, I'm going to uh, just do the S&P uh, index, uh, and I haven't chosen which one to do yet. Uh, I have to talk to one of their advisors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, you know, my intention is, is to start building up some savings uh, while I'm still working, because in four months I get Social Security. Yeah, but. You don't know how much that money's going to grow. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I did very well with Vanguard for years. Um, yeah. and now, of course, it's taken a downturn. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I, uh, I think I made quite a bit of money off of Vanguard. Oh, but I had, I was in there for, oh, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years, something like yeah. that. Well, uh, I figure it this way. Uh, if I keep working until I'm 70 or 72, if I live that long, mm -hmm. uh, and just let the, uh, the payments accumulate in that account mm -hmm. and, uh, and follow the S and P 500, uh, and the S and P goes up anywhere near what it has, you know, uh, it, maybe if I live a few more years after that, mm -hmm. there'll be some money there. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it was a good time to buy. Uh, we're, you're assuming, of course, that it's not going to get any worse than it's been. Well, uh, I'll. Uh, uh, I, I think it may have topped itself out. I, 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 so I hope. I hope so. You know, for my I sake so too. I, I was a little disappointed. I couldn't buy it today, uh, and I, I said, "Oh, geez, I should have come with cash." And I could have. My bank's around the corner from them, but uh, uh, at least uh, I have sort of a thing where. On March 6th, uh, it'll give me a, uh, a little opportunity. A friend of mine who's a stock trader mm -hmm. said uh, what I should do initially, since I've never done this kind of stuff before, is trade on paper uh, and, uh, you know, learn, uh, you know, see what my intentions would have done. You know, so he says trade on paper for a little while. Just, uh, you know, write well, down. Well, you know, I mean, uh, here, you know, he, uh, in good times, there have been bad times when I've had my stocks. There have been good times when I've had my stocks, but I've never sold them off. I just right. sold off about 10000 worth to pay the lawyers, but uh, I never sold them off. And the fact is that what you do is you just put, you go in and you just leave it there. Just forget right. you even have it and just, uh, you know, leave it there. And you're probably going to do okay that way. You know, um, at least you're not, you're not, if you, let me put it this way. If when things are bad, you sell it, right. you are going to lose, <laughs> you uh, know, you, you made, pro, you made, uh, money by selling, uh, when you did to, to pay the well, lawyer. I, because, but that was purely by accident. Yeah. But it was, uh, you know, you made at least 15 or 20% more by selling it then than today. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and then I had that serious stock, you know, which they vested me. 
Mm-hmm. And it's, it's only worth about, oh, it was worth, before this whole thing happened, it was worth about twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars mm-hmm. It just went down about 80 cents a share this yeah. week. This yeah. week alone. There was a time that serious stock, because my friend, uh, when it was at 10, I think, Ten. And, uh, Ten. and it went down to five. You mean 10 cents? Uh, no, ten dollars. Oh, ten dollars, and went down to five cents. Uh, well, it did go down to five cents, but when he owned it, it's, yeah. and I don't know if he still does, it went down. It it went in half, but you know, it came back a bit. What mm-hmm. was it like, seven or eight? Uh, no, it 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 actually it kept going down. It yeah. got pretty bad. It there was a time there were people who bought at fifty dollars a share. Yeah, in the yeah. early days, and then there was that ten dollar price point at which people uh, uh, jumped in, and uh, that was because they said, "Oh, it used to be fifty; it's now ten. I better buy now." And it went down to five, and then it went down to three and two and one, and finally it went down one day. I remember being there the day it went to five cents. Does that mean it got delisted? Huh. Uh, they they hadn't been delisted yet. It's a process that has, they have to go through. But it was down to five cents. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I've got an extra 10 grand sitting in the bank. I should buy 10 grand worth of this five cent stock. And then I went, mm, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Because on Monday, this place could be out of out of business. And I'm out 10 grand. On the other hand, well, I didn't buy it. Yeah. And and I could have bought it right then and there. And uh, I should have put the bet on Mel Karmazin that he was going to wind up saving the company. Um, if I had bought ten thousand dollars worth of shares, how much is? Let's see One here. That'd be bolt. twenty. That'd be twenty shares per dollar. So right. I would own about um, um, two hundred thousand shares. I think. Wow. Yeah, you were and, and they're 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 somewhere even today being bad. They were there at something like, you know, five fifty or something like this. Yeah. I would have uh, yeah, I would have easily been a millionaire if I just bought ten thousand dollars worth of that stock at five dollars. Well, I I remember uh, uh, I was talking to a guy that worked for me who was always into the stock market. Yeah, and uh, he helped everybody but me. You know, <laughs> he never got me <laughs> in it, and. Uh, so uh, Google was going public. And I said, you know, I like Google. I use Google. I, I think this is pretty good. He says, it's overpriced. And I think it came out at 80, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, is when, uh, when they had the first public offering. Uh, it was supposed to be 35, and then it came out at 80. And uh, I had 180 grand from the sale of a house. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I should maybe put 10,000 into it. I didn't do anything. So... You know, this, there goes the story. You know what Google is worth now? What is it, 800 a share? Or? Yeah, right. Well, all of us are woulda, coulda, shoulda people, you know. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I could have done pretty well. Hello, Josh. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Okay. All right. Um, how's your stock doing? Uh, mine? I don't, I don't know. I don't look at it too often. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, don't look at it today. Don't look at it today. It was not. I mean, a- it's actually. It's it's not bad. I mean, it gets cheaper, and then you buy some more if you have the cash to do it, and then it comes back, and you actually make money off stuff like this. So. Yeah. Oh, you you, uh, you you you. That's called shorting. Uh, no, it's called dollar cost averaging. Is it that? Is that what it is? Okay. I mean, you just always like fine. Like, for instance, today is the day that my company purchases company shares for you as part of your pension plan. Mm-hmm. And today is the day I purchase it. So I'm sure company stock is down, but it'll come back. So I technically get more yeah. today than I would yeah. if they had bought it three weeks ago. I mean, yeah. it's that makes sense. I do, mean, do, do, so, me, do me a fa- do me a favor, will you, uh, Josh? Hang up and call again, or or move your Wi-Fi kind of a little bit because you're breaking up on us. One or the other. Okay. Are, are you able to hear me, Annie? 
now I hear you, but uh, it's uh, it's not that the picture's pixelized; it's the sound is. No, the sound breaks up, and his yeah, picture also up. starts starts and stops. But oh, talk okay, to us now. If it continues, I I can call you back if it if it's still bad. Oh, it sounds good right now. So if okay. you if you moved Just it a little bit, know. that improves it. Hello, Tony. Tony, <laughs> he's frozen. That that's <laughs> good. That's good uh, picture of him. Good there. picture of him. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna print that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he will call back. Um, yeah, there he goes. Boom, he's gone. Oh boy, not a great night for uh, for uh, for for Skype, is right. it? Yeah. Uh, but so, uh, I mean, I think sometimes the market is intentionally driven down. Mm -hmm. oh, Liquid yeah. cash can yeah. purchase, you know, stock in order to make more money in uh, the long run. Well, I mean, the, two the, days ago, I heard Warren Buffett say that he was perfectly fine with this. And he says that's part of the, you know he's a guy who's well, well he's he's seen it he's I'll just buy a bunch more stock and in five yeah. years it'll be worth ten times what it would be if I'd have bought it three days before this so yeah. that's fine but he's probably not going to be alive by then but no, you, know, but, you know. Jeff was uh, going to say something yes Jeff somebody will be Jeff well, I was just curious if uh, Phil actually uh, bought some stuff this today no I couldn't uh, I gave them a personal check. And uh, it isn't clear to uh, to use until the sixth of March. Right. Uh, so uh, they uh, they asked me if I wanted to buy stuff on margin, and I said no, nah, no, nah, I'll just pay cash. And uh, because I'm not exactly sure how margin works, and I didn't want to involve myself in something that I oh, definitely oh margin know. is you just simply buy it uh, uh, without paying anything for it, and if the price goes down, you got to pay the difference. Yeah, but what if uh, uh, what, what if, do they make you pay interest on top of it because you're buying it without money? I I can't remember exactly how that works, but on margin, am I right, Jeff? That's pretty much what. You know, I've never done it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people I know. I think what you're saying makes sense. have gone and, and bought on margin, and it's considered not to be a good thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, isn't that why the market crashed in '29? That the People were buying on margin, and, and I don't, were, I don't think that was all. I don't think that was the only reason, but you know, close well, to it. People were jumping out of the thirteenth floor. Yeah, yeah, they, they were. Okay, there's there's Tony. What happened to you, Tony? I don't know. I got disconnected. I, I then I went back into Skype. Maybe Skype crashed. Maybe your mother was using her vibrator again. <laughs> she just called me. Did she? We got a little. Well, you know what it is. She's got arthritis, but. My uncle I used to work for Alex, he turned, I think, 76, but he, they don't really talk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my Aunt Barbara called, she says she can't stand him. She goes, oh, it was his birthday. He was looking for a card from us. My mother's like, I don't send cards to anybody. She says, I'll fuck him. <laughs> so that's it. They, well, there goes my monetization for tonight. Uh -huh. That generation tend to write and send cards uh, I stopped that a years ago. I mean, come on. He's in his 70s looking for a birthday card. He's just an idiot. Nobody said that he was shit. I told you, when he goes, I'm not going to the funeral. I told my brother that already. I'm not wasting my time. Who's that, your uncle? Yeah, I don't like him, Alex. If you if you met him, you would tell him right off. He's such a cheap bastard, it makes me sick. Hey, hey, hey. It's a monetization. <laughs> no, bastard's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Bastard's okay. Alex, he took me to lunch one time and he paid with coupons. Who does that? <laughs> you my don't brother, use coupons? I told my brother he, that. He, he says he, he paid had, with he coupons. Had, he had, I said, he, yeah, at a fucking diner. Hey, hey, hey. Do hey, you sorry. remember when they... Had, out. Boy, you're okay. costing me a lot of money tonight, I'm Tony. Sorry, I'll write you a check. I'm sorry. <laughs> remember those coupon books that you'd buy for like $25 and uh, you'd go out to lunch or dinner... And or the movies, and you you got you know one meal free, or uh, uh, they, they were very popular about 20, 25 years ago. Yeah, you, you remember those? It was a it was a big book, maybe with five, six hundred coupons in it. I know as a kid, I used to get my mother used to buy the McDonald's book. We used to just rip the stuff out and get the food. The entertainment they called it. Oh, the, that I never had. Yeah. The entertainment book. It was so we were going into his places. We, if I went to McDonald's, it was a big treat on a Friday night. Yeah, that was a, that was a big treat. Hey Ray, hello. 
T uh, turn up your mic a little bit. It's a little low. A little on the low side. Turn it up. There we go. Let me sit here. Uh, is that better? It's a little better, yeah. You can I think turn it up you're, even going, you're not going through your main mic. Oh, maybe I'm going through now the... Uh, yeah. Am I? Okay. Yeah. Better? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. I had the game much, down. Much better. So what do you guys think about my whole idea of starting the show at 1030? I think you ought to start at midnight. That's a bit. No, you should, the <laughs> joke should have been one minute before midnight. <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, you know I, it's, it's, you've been doing this a long time. And you're devoting a lot of effort to it. And uh, maybe you deserve a little slowdown. It's, it, it's okay. Well, it's not a matter of slowing it down. And what I've always found in radio, okay, and in my <laughs> career, is that if, for instance, they gave me a four-hour shift, it was not as I was not as good as if I had a three hour shift. And if yeah. I had a two hour shift, I was even better because you have a certain finite amount of energy to put into a show. And if you yeah. know you got four hours to that you gotta do this, you spread it out. You spread but it you're thin. Not, you're not forty um, years old anymore well, but, either. No, but that's not the point. The point is is that I I think with an hour and a half I could probably putting a little more energy into the show than I'm putting into it now, you know. Yeah. Uh, although, uh, it, it doesn't, aren't the most successful podcasts the ones that are like these five and ten minute snippets that, uh, for instance, the, the Tonight Show. No. They don't show the whole Tonight Show. They nope. only show no, nope. no, nope. uh, nope. part. No. Nope. Joe Rogan is the biggest guy uh, in podcasting. Makes about 300, uh, 30... Oh, what is it? How much did I see he made? He makes about three million, thirty million dollars a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Between between do between his show and selling time on it, he also does concerts and things like that. So he's uh -huh. monetized it that way and comes out with about thirty million dollars. And his show is like an hour and a half. You know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's a fight commentator too, and he makes a lot of money doing that. Oh, is he a fight commentator too? I didn't know yeah. that. For yeah, MMA. that that by the way, that three thirty million is not all from the podcast, but it is attributable to his uh, notoriety doing the podcast. In other words, he's monetized it outside of the podcast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then getting sponsors is another another way to do it. I I, I watched this guy's podcast, a, a financial guy, and he was talking about how two years ago he was making nothing, and now uh, he's he's making like a, a million or a million and a half a year, mm -hmm. uh, and because and he's found ways to maximize yeah. uh, the amount of income, the yeah. types of by getting people like you to eat his bull. And then uh, 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 sell advertisers' time because he has all the viewers. It's the oldest con in the world. I'm going to teach you how to make money. And while you're at it, I'm going to make money teaching you how to make money. If I find the guy's thing again, I'll forward it to you. Yeah, well, you know. It was interesting. Don't, don't, you know, don't bother. It, it made sense. No, well, they all make sense. They, they, they're just big, giant, you know, I'm an expert deal I think How, zero on my podcast hey listen if the guy had all if he did so well in the stock market uh yeah. he wouldn't need to do a damn podcast okay you know he could, yeah, he could find some stock, he's not a stock i think he's a financial advisor or something yeah yeah what, what is all that noise uh the somebody's chair uh, some i think oh. i think it was yeah. something were you cleaning something there that the ray I was cleaning my glasses, but it wasn't making any noise. Oh well, that's uh, now that we don't have that noise anymore. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. Noise being emanating. That's all I'm it was saying. Rubbing on plastic. <clears throat> yeah, this has been quite a week uh, monetarily. I mean, this is this is about they say the worst it's been since 2008. No, earlier than that. I, I think 87, 88. Yeah, yeah they say they say no. no. They, Dot com. The, 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 well, they they say that this is this goes back to the meltdown before the meltdown. Yeah. You know, this is pretty bad. This is pretty terrible. And uh, um, it, but of course, you know, it's the whole it's the phony um, coronavirus scare that's going on. You know, so, that's what you know, I watched that when he talked, and the other guy, Anthony Fucci, who was big on the AIDS. Virus. He helped, you know, get get involved in that. He totally contradicted everything he said. Like he's trying. He did feel. You have to admit, 
Trump was trying to put a bullshit face on that. Well, well that there goes my monetization, monetization again. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah. I'm an actor. Well, I'm now you can say it all you want to because you've blown my money for the night. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, it, uh, it was... Uh, uh, I, I actually... Boy, I who was it? Mulvaney? What's his name? Mick Mulvaney. M Mitch Mulvaney Nick, was I was on today. Mitch, I think, is his name. Isn't it? Mitch? No. Uh, anyway, Mitch. whatever his name is, his name is Mud. So far as I'm concerned, <laughs> he was he was uh, saying he was sending out the the floating out the idea that the reason that there's a coronavirus scare right now is because the press is pushing it. To make Trump look bad. Uh, what? What? Nobody has... What? It's Mick Mulvaney, you're Mick, right. Mick Mulvaney, yeah. Or Mick, but I Alex, said Mick. in the summer, I saw the Chinese people in the supermarkets wearing a mask. They must have knew about it. No, but well, here, here's the thing. Who was the radio on? What? There, somebody's playing, like, uh, some uh, news in the background. No. 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 I don't hear it. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it was a website I clicked on. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, it was a, um, uh, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, this whole, this whole concept that we are, um, um, uh, the whole concept that, 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 you know, the press is doing this. And the, uh, I think I think they were also trying to blame the Democrats for the virus scare. Yeah, they're trying to uh, use it to weaponize uh, it against Trump. Yeah. Oh, you believe that? Yes. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. You've really God jumped. doesn't have anything to do with it. But. <laughs> you have jumped off the fucking deep end. Oh, shoot. We demonetized again. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. I mean, seven second bleeper. So, so you believe this whole thing where Trump Jr. is claiming that the Democrats hope millions of people die from the coronavirus? I don't think they hope millions of people die. Well, but I Trump think Jr. said that. They, well, just because he said that doesn't necessarily. Well, he's going to be our next president, oh. don't you know? Help us. Uh, not, not, uh, how old is Ivanka? How old is Ivanka? I think she's old enough to be president. Thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well now, see, that's product placement, and you you should try to get uh, you know. This is uh, no product sponsor. placement. I got my hand over the bottle. Well, when they sponsor it, then you move your if hand. If I did that and said, boy, this is good juice. <laughs> Can I say what Donald Trump Jr. said? Here's what? his quote today. Yeah. The playbook is old at this point, but for them to try to use a pandemic and seemingly hope that it comes here and kills millions of people so that they can end Donald Trump's streak of winning as a new level of sickness. Well, That's what Jr. said today. You know, they're calling it Trump's virus. They're they're they're. Who's calling it Trump's virus? I the media. No, the media. I haven't seen it anywhere in the media. That's because you don't look at Okay, okay, find it. Find it. Except don't go to Drudge. Okay. Uh, I'll just do a Google search here. Yeah, yeah. Trump's virus. Well, you, Have you heard anybody? Uh, uh, oh, boy. No. I Nancy heard. Pelosi, probably. No, it wasn't she, Nancy Pelosi. You know. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's, he's going to have to own it sooner or later. What do you think, uh, Josh? Uh, I don't believe that it's, uh, the hope of the Democrats that people would become sick because it'll bring down Trump or whatever. I'm not quite sure they need any help with that. He seems to be doing a decent job of ruining his own presidency on his own. If they would just wait <laughs> a few more months, there'll be an election. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, the, the need for that would be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, these, these stories are a little detached from reality. I mean, right. What's the thing? Right. So, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I just think it's, 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 uh, uh, the, the whole notion that, uh, that, you know, the Democrats, they, they were all but saying that, the, you know, we invented this and the press has invented this. 
uh, to make Trump look bad. I'm sorry. Uh, it makes the Chinese president look bad. It makes the yeah. pr pr premier of India look bad. It makes uh, uh, you know any uh, Iran look bad. Come on, this is not uh, this is not just happening here. In fact, it's happening here less than it's happening anywhere else in the world so far. Do you see what's happening in Italy, Alex? They're, they're pretty much, the kids are not even allowed in school now, I think, for like a week or two. Yeah. Maybe yeah, more. Well, in, in Japan, they're not going to school. Um, uh, and in China, I mean, my wife, uh, my wife works for the Chinese. And everybody in her company is working from home. Every wow. morning, every time, about this time of night, she gets these... <laughs> The, she's on this, uh, this, uh, you know, this. Uh, well, it's kind of like a, 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 what do you call it, a chat room, but for all the people that work at her company, and like about a hundred people are going, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So they all let each other know that they're online, uh, and they're all doing it from home. And now she got the word today from her company that they may move their operations here in New York. Oh, nice. it, 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 No, wait a minute. Oh, I, it, China? It, no, into our, in, into everybody's own homes and not go to the office for a while because of the pa the coming pandemic and to keep it down, to tamp it down. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a serious thing, and it has nothing to do. The press is not gin this thing up. It exists. Yes, Ray? Yeah. So uh, Rome... Has 888 infected people, wow. 46 have recovered, 21 dead. Uh, didn't it's something happen at the Vatican? Uh, the, that, that the somebody Pope died. got sick. The Pope? the Pope got sick, but somebody died uh, at, at the Vatican. Some, uh, and then also in Iran, uh, uh, an ambassador or something died, I believe, from the uh, virus. Yeah. Well, in San Marino, one, one got sick. I don't see anybody so, what, which of the leadership of the so well organized Democratic Party uh, that obviously has its shit so together managed to plan all this out so perfectly? Uh, uh, I'm not <laughs> sure. Well, these I are mean, the same people. That, these are the same people who know how yeah. to. These are the same people who know how to build apps. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this, are these the same people who couldn't uh, couldn't even agree on things the other night on a debate stage that you know yeah. six months ago? Yeah, yeah. So they all. It's all a, it's all a big plot by MSNBC, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, but but it, 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 I wouldn't be making jokes about this if it weren't for the fact that uh, Trump has had his people go out and start spreading the rumor. That this right. this virus is out to discredit Trump. Trump, you know, Trump is so egotistical, and thinks he the world the, the, the world uh, uh, revolves around him. That this uh, whole virus has it's out to get him. You know, this is strange. Well, I can only hope. <laughs> you know what's funny though, Alex? I was telling this to Phil. I'll tell you. He was molded by Roy Cohn, right? Yeah. And Roy Cohn died of AIDS. Can yeah. you imagine if he loses the election because of this virus? It's almost like he's come full circle. <laughs> I don't think they're blaming Clark. Yeah. I, I don't think they're blaming Trump. And actually, well, Trump well, actually what they're him. blaming Trump for is cutting down the uh, CDC by about two-thirds or maybe even more than that, three-quarters. I uh, heard but, uh, that that was uh, not accurate. No, no, it was accurate. Absolutely <laughs> accurate, Phil. I saw the statistics today. It was absolutely true. They they even showed the the time he wrote the executive order out and cut cut out the funding to the CDC. He said, "Well, you know, if anything ever goes bad, we can just hire those people back really fast." Yeah. Yeah. Well, what he did was he stopped travel quickly. Uh, to and from China, which it was he was stopping travel for to and from China under the trade war for crying out loud. Oh, uh, last, earlier, earlier when the uh, outbreaks first happened, he, he, yeah. he put a travel ban on China. Anything he could do to put a travel ban on China, he would do if he had half the excuse. And uh, what? So don't uh, make I, him look like a good guy. He was doing it to yeah, get even. He, he put the travel ban on it because of the virus. Phil, he's um, not stopping a travel ban from Russia. He's not stopping a travel brand ban from Saudi Arabia. Uh, 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, it, well, he he put the travel ban on early uh, for uh, China. Yeah, but for that, China, but, but you don't see me. Is South Korea? It wasn't until maybe the last he, week or he's so. Just, he's just popped up. What and, do you mean these uh, just popped up? South Korea has been been uh, having this thing for weeks and weeks now. Yes, but he put the travel ban on the, China. By like, the way, they had this map of all the countries that have the coronavirus now, and there are a lot of these countries that were red, right? Yeah. Do you know the one country that wasn't? Iceland. North Korea. King John Un? Travel anywhere. They, yeah, nobody well, goes in there and her. nobody gets out. It, what a perfect, what a perfect shows. hermetic seal they have against this disease. You yeah, know, right? Isolationism works. Isolationism right. works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Trump's got a good idea. Yeah, that's why he gets along with him. Oh, so you admit that is his idea? Isolationist? Yeah, yeah, it's an isolationist. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you approve of that, Dave? So far. Well, so far until your stock goes down. Anyway, <laughs> um, it, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really, I mean, anybody who thinks that this is a uh, uh, fake news or that this is a plot by the Democrats to discredit Trump <laughs> is, well, it, the only person who feels that way is Trump, and it's a very egotistical point of view. Rather, here's why the stocks went down as precipitously as they did. You would have thought that after the president goes on television and, and should ask people to for cooler minds to prevail or whatever, that the stocks would kind of rally and come back again. But he didn't do anything to instill confidence in the American public that anything was going to be done about this or that he had the, he had the he had the uh, the reins of state in hand and were firmly had his grip on them and was going to make sure that Americans didn't get sick but nobody believes him anymore and so but consequently put, con consequently the stock went the, the, down it should have gone up after that speech that's the reason he did the speech to begin it, with it's not the virus that caused the stock completely to go down yes, it's it also is. the fact that there are closed factories and there's not going to be business in the number two economy yes uh, all those things yeah. all those things but he could have he could have said something that made it america feel better about itself and the stock market wouldn't have tanked like it did the next day in which it tanked i think the biggest of any of the days that it tanked went down 1100 the day after he gave that uh, press conference so what kind of wonderful uh, um, uh, confidence is he instilling in the American public. What do you think, oh. Kevin? Kevin? Yeah, he's there. Okay, I want to make sure he... Can you hear me, Kevin? Uh, yeah, for a second, my clock just made a bunch of noise. I didn't hear you. Yeah, and I was going to say, what do you think about all of this? Uh, it's pretty much what you've been saying. I, I think it's a mess. Yeah. Um, I... I still have a a little reservation. I think the the media has kind of propped it up to be a lot more than it is in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you compare it to all the the flu, uh, compare it to the flu. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's yeah. probably twenty thousand people out there that could be dying from the flu right now. Yeah, but uh, here's the, here's I think, the difference. I think that the coronavirus is 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 something that we got to keep an eye on, but not panic about. By the way, turn your mic off, will you, please, uh, Bree? While you're when you're not w walking and when you're not talking and stuff, just turn. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody, I, somebody I would, I would, I would. Uh, you know, yeah, that makes sense on the face of it, Kevin, but it doesn't make sense in its totality. Okay, let me explain. Yeah, we're and talking. I, and the reason I say that is yeah. because I had somebody put out a, a video today yeah and they were walking through a store to go get some lysol mm -hmm. and they turned the lysol can around and said oh look on the on the on the label it says we'll kill coronavirus they've known this for years they set this up i don't does it so say that but the coronavirus has been around for a long time so it's, it's just breaking out there's an israeli company 
that is supposedly 90 days away from a vaccine. No. They working on a coronavirus no. vaccine for chickens. And what they're doing is they found that the same uh, protocols could be used for humans, and they're trying to get it cleared. And they said that they were 90 days away from uh, having See, a vaccine. That worries me is all the bullshit that's flying around. And, and that sounds like a big piece of bullshit. Uh, I'm writing an article about that for a magazine. Really? Did you, well, uh, Bree said something? Bree, what were you saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing a, an article on just what Kevin was talking about, um, and I'm calling it sort of uh, Rashomon media of, uh, to a certain degree. And also, if you're familiar with the, uh, the story of the, the Indian fable where the, the blind men encounter an elephant and they try to describe it, and they all describe it as something different because they only see certain parts, they don't see the whole thing. And that's, that's kind of what's going on in this situation. Actually, there is a uh, conference going on right now, a seminar given by Google here in Singapore about the coronavirus. Um, I, I have the stream for it. They're live streaming, uh, but, uh, and, and it'll be posted later. But, oh. yeah, uh, the, the main topic is everybody is freaking out, and it's, it may not be warranted. We just, you know, there's too much out there. Well, here, here let me explain something, first of all. We have let me, let me, concern. Yeah, let me uh, attend to what Kevin was saying. It, on the face of it, that sounds right. Okay, we have, uh, you know, th uh, X number of people in the world die every year from the flu. And that's true. But there are many different strains of the flu. It's not all the same flu. Uh, and, and these are things which are going after us. This happens to be one thing that exponentially is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, we don't know how many people are dead now in China. It's certainly over 3,000 now, you know. Uh, uh, and and in uh, in a lot of countries, it's starting to get it. It's a matter of it's exponential, you know. And okay, you got a couple people in California, but they had to get it from somewhere because they don't know where they got it from. They don't know anybody that went to China or anything like that, and they don't know where they got it. So whoever they got it from is walking around giving it to other people, and those people are going to give it to other people. And before it even presents itself. People are infected. So we don't know what the potential is of this. And just because right now the deaths aren't high, well, thank God for that. But just remember, we had a thing back in World War, um, uh, World War I uh, called the Spanish flu, and somebody tonight was correcting me. Um, he said, uh, they said that actually a half a, mil half a billion people Almost a third of the world's population at that time were killed by the Spanish flu. Well, think of this as the Spanish flu, one strain, you know? That, that's, that's my point. Does that make you feel better, Kevin? <laughs> well, yeah, but I, uh, I understand. We need to be concerned. Mm -hmm. We need to be watching for it and, and being prepared, which we're doing. Yeah, this happens to be a very deadly flu, uh, and it is especially deadly for two groups of people: children and seniors. I mean, yeah. I uh, you know, and, and I'm one of them. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, let me ask you this, Kevin. For all you feel about how this maybe it isn't all that it's cracked up to be and all of that, do you feel good about sending your kid to school right now? Eh, not really. I've been starting to think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ray. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I need to correct. There were 500 million people who were infected, infected with the Spanish flu, but 40 to 50 million died. Okay. Good. I said 50 million, and somebody yes, here corrected me right. and said 500 million, and no. I went, gee, I always heard it at 50 million. <clears throat> yeah, 500 million were, were infected. Yeah. And also, there are eight different coronaviruses, and SARS is one of them. Mm -hmm. The problem with this one is we don't know enough, enough about it well, how he, dangerous it is. People are still getting sick from the go. other coronaviruses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are potentially thousands of coronaviruses. Right. Uh, there are eight we know, know about. We, we just, yeah, and we just don't know, you know. Breathing. And the other thing is... That, Can you raise your oh, camera uh, from the sidewalk? Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I mean, we just don't know. Uh, I'm going here later tonight. It's going to be hopping. I'm trying to find a, a hotel that I got to switch to. 
Uh, but we just don't know. And, and, and that's the thing. And the reason why it's so deadly is we're not, ex- we haven't been exposed to it. Right. You know, most of the time you go through life, you're exposed, you get the, like, I don't get a flu shot. I've had the flu so many times that like my body just sits and says, oh yeah, I think I know what that one is. Let's attack that. Let's get it. But this is something that's been sort of under a rock you know, or in a bat. We just don't know. You know? Hey, uh, Bree, uh, I got to know, yeah. did you fix your bank account? Yeah, I got it all fixed. All right. Uh, I just got, uh, I just got a, uh, today, yesterday I got everything straightened out, and today I have to ask them to waive some fees and stuff. Okay. I figured I'd save that for the second day, like get everything straight first, then ask for all the fees to be waived. Phil, Phil, let me host the show. You just drove us into a ditch. I, I, okay. I was just... <laughs> You know, well, well but, you know, it's highly relevant for me right now, Alex. I am in what is considered an epicenter of coronavirus. I know. Not, uh, I, he had to go to Singapore to go take care of his bank here. account. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the government, in fact, the government here said, "Don't wear a mask unless you're sick," because they want to be able to tell who's sick and who, who isn't. Uh, when, I, when I crossed the border, there was no one in line. No one was there. The whole place was empty. I've never seen it like that in my life. Is, are, the, uh, are the streets right where you're walking look pretty empty? Well, I just saw a couple of people back yeah. there. Yeah. But, well, uh, well, this is this is actually a nightlife center. This is one of the nightlife centers. Yeah. So it'll get happening tonight. There's a Hooters over there. Well, do you think it'll be happening tonight, or do you think it'll be quiet tonight? Yeah. No, I think uh, it definitely will be happening. It, it won't be to the degree that it normally is, but... I mean, I went out with a friend and colleague last night. We were out until 3 a.m., and, it, it, you know, party central. Well, I guess people say to themselves, well, I can either die of the coronavirus or I can get laid. What do I want to do the most? <laughs> yeah, I was feeling under the weather uh, when I was on the bus yesterday. Uh, you know, yeah. he said he had some flu symptoms. Uh, is that still what's Well, I, you know, it, whenever I travel, I sort of get that way. So, you know, like when you get on a bus or you get on a plane, I think your temperature goes up a little bit as a natural response to the environment. Because, you know, a fever is kind of, a slight fever is a good thing. It's your body saying, hey, I'm prepared for stuff that's going to come at me. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I think it's okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, can we turn off, your, uh, turn off your mic? There's a lot of wind there right now. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'll cut out uh, and I'll come back in. I've got to find this hotel and get checked in. Why? Why do you have to get a new hotel? Because the old one is getting filled up with people who don't want to be outside. Uh, yeah. Well, no. The, it, it's just a matter of preference. I was in one part of the city. I want to be in another part of the city today. Um, mm-hmm. I got a good deal on the other one. I I got in kind of late. It was near the bus station. I knew it. Yeah. It was cheap, but they raised their rate. For tonight, for some reason. Yeah. But I got I found another one that's similar in a better mm-hmm. part of the city. So mm-hmm. I'll try it out. Okay. Anyway. But I got to try to find it. I've never been to this one before. So yeah. Yeah. I got to use my Google Maps and stuff, and I don't want to go okay, keep well, going like this. Okay. Well, let us know when you're when you're back, and we'll uh, you okay. know. Okay. Okay. There goes Bree, ladies and gentlemen, on the streets of our man on the streets of Singapore. Um, but. Sp- the virus, one step at a time. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, did you find anything where anybody uh, called it Trump's flu? Uh, Trump is saying that it's a hoax, uh, <laughs> and uh, it may, may be coming from Trump. <laughs> no, but I mean... I like the idea that it's Trump's flu. Did anybody call it Trump's flu, Phil? I haven't found it yet. Okay. Well, I think if, if somebody had, you'd find it already, you know. So let's let's end that little notion. Boy, my, my pants are riding up on me. Ah, there we go. Ah. I called the Trump's flu. Huh? Schumer did too. He did, Chucky. Well, he's an evil it's, human being. Doesn't yeah. glasses. Yes, Trump is an evil human being. I mean, uh, oh, uh, Schumer. Schumer. Yeah. yeah. And so is Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. yeah. You know the devil. Yeah. They're probably all hoping to get the virus all against each other. Did you hear about this new guy they want to make the, uh, the uh, what, the head of is it CIA? What, what are they trying to make him the head of? NSA. NSA? And he has no experience at all? 
He's overqualified. <laughs> He's overqualified so far as Trump appointees Alex, are concerned. Alex, imagine he comes into the interview Germany. Huh? And, no, and, and not radio, they, no. You're hired. <laughs> they called him in temporarily. See, he can have somebody there for 210 days. Mm -hmm. uh, temporary Well, that's usually that's, all anybody lasts anyway, so he doesn't have to clear them through the Congress. That's why the other guy left, because it came up on the 210 days. He left five days early. Uh, he timed out, basically, and that's why he brought in this Grinnell, uh, uh, the German ambassador, uh, and he's going to fill in temporarily until he can find somebody that he can post. Yeah, well, yeah, that's how he used to handle his employees, so they don't have to pay the benefits, too, right? Yeah, yes, right. Right. Uh, a friend of mine just wrote me. He must be listening. He says, I see Trump now blames the, de uh, the coronavirus on the Democrats yes. as a hoax. Yeah. Uh, and he says, uh, do they have Democrats in China? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's pretty terrible over there. I mean, everybody at Citic, which is one of the largest banking companies in China, which my wife works for, works for a segment of that company, uh, uh, has all their people working from home. That's okay. So, so why did they remodel that office? Well, uh, you know that that's it's true, but you know uh, what, 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 what? They're not moving out of their. They're not yeah. vacating their offices right now. If the right. if it gets bad, they will. Okay, and they have contingencies so people can work from home. They've set up the infrastructure and everything in case that need should arise. Maybe that's a good thing. You know? oh, oh, of course it's a good thing, you know. Plus, there's nothing more that my wife would like to do than work from home. You no, know? she has to go in and get the mail. Huh? She has to go in and get the mail. Uh, so, you know, she'll have to go to the office. I think there may also be ways of taking care of that, too, by having the mail all routed to here, you know. So. Yeah, how does, how does that work for you with uh, your packages from Amazon? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. The stuff they leave down in the in the lobby so people can steal it. Yeah, I always get paranoid when they leave it in front of the house. Yeah, they, you know, I mean, they don't care. In fact, not once not I, I uh, we had a sign down there that said, please do not leave the packages in the lobby. Leave them in front of the doors of the people they're addressed to. I and know your first mistake. It, it, you said, please, this is New York. Well, they, they, they put that sign up and... Uh, a guy FedEx comes along, just drops it in the lobby, and I went, you see the sign? He says, yeah. I said, well, he said, to hell with you. Goodbye. You know, they didn't care. No, nah, they're New York. No, they're FedEx. Yeah. They're the worst. They're the worst. But anyway. You know, they, they get the stuff to you fast. Uh, FedEx does a pretty good job. Who? Uh, FedEx. No, you know, uh, no. FedEx is the worst. Uh, UPS, UPS has been the best one that I've dealt with. Did Amazon drop FedEx? Yes. Ah. Well, maybe their service will improve now that they don't have that high a volume. I, I don't know why they why they dropped them, but I think they probably dropped them because there were too many complaints. Okay. You know. Anyway, Bree is back, do ladies and gentlemen. Do they have their own delivery service now? Uh, do they have what? Drone delivery. No, they don't have the drone. Amazon dropped them because they're all moving to all their own internal well, delivery. Well, Amazon has their own trucks here in New York now. Right. Yeah. They're not contractor trucks with an Amazon sign on them? No. no uh, they, they've been slowly converting to their own everything. Like, they've, they've been buying 737s. I mean, they're going to fly their own stuff around now. I mean, trucks... Planes, the whole—I mean, they're going to do their own internal. Uh, yeah, they got logistics. They got gray vans that say Amazon on them. Well, yeah. uh, maybe that's called vertical integration. I know at my business, I am changing from uh, uh, installers that are independent contractors to employee installers uh, because uh, there's a new law in California, AB5, which is making it more difficult to classify someone as an independent contractor, but. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm finding that it's even it's more profitable actually to have employee installers. You know, it's funny because years ago they went all contractor, and now they're going back to that. You know, that, that, that's you know there was 20 years ago everybody was outsourcing, and now they're all going back to their own their own employee 
do you think they were outsourcing because they were cheating? You know, well, they were outsourcing because it was cheaper. Right. And it, now it, it's got to the point where it's cheaper to have your own employees again. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's a, well, uh, hopefully it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's changing. But why do you want to have them as employees? You just feel that that's the easier way of doing it, Phil, or that uh, well, you get more benefits I, that way? I, no, I, I don't want to have an issue with the government reclassifying them after I've paid them and then being on the hook for yeah. uh, more taxes, their taxes and the employer's taxes that uh, I and, and the fines that are associated with it. Yeah. So uh, it uh, and also I think that if you handle people as employees, you have more direction as a subcontractor. I can't tell them what to do. I just say there's the address and mm. you know, yeah. Good yeah. yeah. And, uh, so I would rather, uh, you know, be able to dictate methodology and, and the type of installation that's done. Right. So, right. so that I can get the highest quality. I'm not looking for the lowest price. I'm looking yeah. for the highest quality. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, wouldn't that benefit you to have your own worker do the job? Because think about it. Say if you subcontracted the work out and they did a shitty job and the person would be like, I'm not going to this guy again for rugs or floors. These guys are never doing the job at the end. Say if they're sloppy or this, that's and, a, a reaction towards your company then. Well, the uh, installer, if uh, if they do a lousy job, I'm on the hook for it. Whereas a subcontractor has a bond, and if they do uh, something that's not right, I can attach their bond to pay for it. But I, ultimately, I'm on the hook anyway. Yeah, because you don't want to. You don't want to have a. You want to have a customer come back. You're, All you're, of these are canards, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, uh, it's just people should pay the taxes that are due. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I think it'll get rid of an underground economy yeah. that, uh, you know, that's been functioning for a long time. And uh, they don't have to raise taxes. They should just collect the ones that they should be getting. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that's good. What else is there to talk about? Is there anything else that's... Uh... That's uh, that's happening. That we there was a guy who got um, arrested in a in an old folks home. A worker there for sucking an old lady's toes. Oh my god! Oh. So that talk about what that. is that? No, sorry about that. They're ki they're What's killing they're killing children in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> I I wanted to uh, ask. If anybody had heard the news, somebody messaged me last night that all flights had been canceled out of uh, the UAE. But uh, did anybody hear this? I no. thought maybe she, she was no. pulling my leg. Uh, okay. Well, who knows? Who knows? You know, I mean, a lot of these countries, a lot of countries are just not letting people in or out because they want to, again, like uh, North Korea, hermetically seal themselves, you know? Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. they've got a big problem with this virus in uh, Iran, but we don't hear anything about it because it's such a closed society that the you know they don't they don't let the news out, you know. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, Trump should have learned something, I think, from the Chinese. The reason the coronavirus got as bad as it did is because the Chinese government was very quiet about even admitting they had a problem for a while. And by the time they admitted it, it was too late. You know, it was it, it was an epidemic. Uh, the Emirate Airlines uh, or the Emirates has suspended flights to and from Doha, which is oh uh, uh, yeah, that's the yeah that's, that's yeah that's, and uh, and uh, the guy who uh, the Vatican tie to the guy that died, he was the uh, ex ambassador to the Vatican from Iran. Yeah, this is um, uh, 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 in the UAE has stopped all travel into um, nope. holy sites in, in the UAE, such as Mecca, okay? Uh, and that would be, I think, Doha is the closest yeah. place. And, there, and in Japan, they're talking about uh, no, uh, no Olympics, Summer Olympics. Uh, it, well, it's, it's, they're not saying that yet because it's okay. still five months away, and by then this thing may have turned the corner, okay? And, and it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, and let's want, also not forget Dubai has World Expo 2020. They, they've been preparing for that for like eight years. That would be, oh, it would be devastating. Well, it'll, oh. it'll, it'll be Expo 2021, you know. 
I wonder how the baseball season's going to be over here. I wonder <laughs> if they'll draw less crowds. Well, at least America. it's at least it's outdoors. You know, True. Yeah. It's not inside. You know, th this is uh, news from January 12, 2020, but it says the Dubai airport was flooding and they had flights canceled or, or delayed. I, I didn't know, even know it rained yeah. there. Oh, it does. It rains a lot. I've, I've told you guys that when I was there. I showed you that, uh, you know, they're doing the cloud seeding, so sometimes they get a lot of flooding and they're not prepared for it at all. So, you know, if they get like two inches of rain, everything's got to shut down. Yeah. I cannot find this hotel to save my life. Oh boy. I understand the Boston uh, race uh, is potentially going to be canceled. Wow. The marathon? The marathon, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and what's it, what, you know, what's this going to do for the primaries, like Super Tuesday? I mean, are people going to stay away out of fear? Yeah. <laughs> the Democrats think it's a hoax. <laughs> They're gonna come. I got to work the polls, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you get you getting inundated with a lot of uh, ads on TV uh, out there in California. Oh yeah. yeah, I I signed up for all the free stuff now from Bloomberg. Yeah. I think I might have mentioned it. The buttons. Yeah. Yes, you the did. You did. Yes, and you the did. matches. Yes, you did. I can't wait to see yes. what's next. Yes, <laughs> uh, but um, um, uh, uh, how do you guys feel about it, Kevin? How do you feel about all the ads? Who, who's who's running the most ads? You know, Bloomberg even put an ad in our little local paper here, and even the local people don't put ads in our local paper. <laughs> I like it. You don't spend it. It's, re it's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't even know how he found the paper. He must have had a bird or something that was in the bottom of the case. I heard on one television station he was buying ads in his own ads. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I was surprised. How do you, let me ask, uh, Josh has no. been kind of quiet tonight. Josh, how do you feel about the, 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 the kind of money that's now being spent on campaigns? And I mean, with Bloomberg in it, the other people have to go around getting even more money to spend, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not really a fan of it. I don't think that it should take two years and a couple hundred million to get elected president of the United States. I mean, right. I'm not sure what we can really do about it. I mean, there are a few things maybe. Uh, uh, you know, it's a little tricky yeah. to cap the ability of people to donate to people they choose to support. Um I agree. Some rules, you know, probably need to be made, but you know, I'm just, I'm just saying it's a, tr it's a tricky area. But I, I don't like it. I mean, there's, there's definitely, uh, it shouldn't cost that much money. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the idea that someone, I don't, I just don't know who would want a job that bad that they would spend that kind of money. I, I just, I, I can't even understand. I don't even know how much money you have. How someone could spend a couple hundred million dollars on. TV ads to solicit for something. I I, I mean, yeah. I don't get it. But how much it, he it's Trump? Just the way it is. It's it's fucking ridiculous, really. Uh, no, you know what? No, you know, be yeah. terrific is if if Trump went up against Bloomberg, and uh, when Trump bought an ad, Bloomberg bought an ad right after his saying, <laughs> "Don't believe the last ad. He's lying." They just go up to a <laughs> I mean, if we're lucky, they both have to go bankrupt, and we'd never have to hear from either one of those. Yeah, dumb well, I'll tell, I guess, guess I'm which one? Fat. Guess which one's going bankrupt first? I got my money going. I, I think, it's a sure thing. <laughs> I think Bloomberg can buy the Politburo and still not go bankrupt. Right, 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 <laughs> right. But I mean, he's uh, he's uh, you know he's he's he's, uh, he's got a lot of money. He's got, and, and you know, and, and he's I, I thought about what you said, Alex, the other night, or Phil said. I think you might have said it, Alex. They said that he might have put the people in the stands to vote for him, to clap for him, he paid them. It's the one that said that. Well, I'm beginning to think that isn't true because I watched the whole show again. Okay, okay. I watched it, and uh, they were also booing other people as well, okay. and and so it was. It, it didn't seem like the audience was uh, was stacked. Okay. Did they boo Bloomberg? They, but booing, booing other people is is fine with Bloomberg, but did they boo Bloomberg? I think at one point they did, as a matter of fact. Uh, yeah, that might have been the fifteen people that Warren had in there. 
Yeah, but yeah, she yeah, hates man. it big time. <laughs> Who do you, well, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Oh, uh, I think Joe Biden's going to take it by 20 points. Oh, really? Well, yeah, yeah but that, that's okay. Now, how about Super Tuesday? I, when is Super Tuesday? I think that Bernie Sanders, uh, I think it's going to be very close between maybe three of them. I don't think I don't think anybody's going to get uh, a, a standout number of delegates. I think you're probably right. Would you agree with that, Josh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think Biden is certainly favored to win in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on Tuesday, I mean, it's a real toss up. I mean, I, I think it'll be sorted about maybe finally have two or three people you know, running, and, and I think Biden will be one of those finalists, and probably, you know, certainly Bernie Sanders, and then maybe another. I mean, I don't, I don't think Bloomberg's going to go very far. I, I think that he's banked on this, you know, buy all these ads and not really do anything, and then he'll just win all the stuff on Super Tuesday. I mean, I, I don't really know how he's going to go from basically not doing well in any kind of poll anywhere to all of a sudden, you know, being the front runner after one day. So I, I think it'll probably be sorted out. Among, well, you know, I cut I, down to probably hopefully two or three people after the next week, but it probably won't because there'll be a couple that will just refuse to to give up. I have I mean, a I have a theory. Have I have a, I have a theory here that that uh, uh, that Bloomberg is playing the long game. That he is expecting that no one will come out with the majority. Okay, and it will be a brokered convention which he can then walk into and start politicking for his nomination the way we used to do it you know mm -hmm. in the good old days before there yeah, were all these primaries and stuff uh but i think that he's he's hoping that his long game is is that nobody's going to seal the nomination and on the second vote it's anybody's guess and he's the guy probably to a lot of these people who quite frankly he's given money to their campaigns over the years will then say okay you know, you've got the money, you've got the technology. Maybe you're the guy to beat Trump. Trump gave money to a lot of those people. Over I mean, the they not, don't want women. Not, I'm not saying that's not a possibility. I, I just, if Democrats choose to go that direction, they're fooling themselves and they're more foolish than I think they are. But I mean, I, I guess we'll see. Well, do you think, where, for instance, I, I think, you know, I'm usually pretty honest. I'll say what I think, and this is one of the areas where I think Phil and I are probably in complete agreement. I think outside of New York City, people see Bloomberg for what he is, which is an elitist prick who's also, you know, a fucking asshole. So, I mean, I think that's how he's going to play in the, you know, yeah. the yeah. flyover states or whatever they're calling it now, you know? I yeah. mean, that's, yeah. But, but so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff, what do you think? Come on, chime in here, I, Jeff. I really think that uh, Mike's got a very good chance. You do? But, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's too premature to understand where he's going to end up. But I, we've got to kind of get a couple of these people off the list. Yeah. You know, like Warren and whatever. I mean, you, you know, you got to get the thing down to three people or so at least. Well, I think I think the egos kind of the egos finally have to be checked at the door. Yeah. And they're not. Uh, I think that Elizabeth Warren, if she were being honest and decent, would say, "Hey, look, there's no way I'm going to get this nomination. I'm going to get out of the way to kind of clear the path for another moderate." or for a moderate maybe to get it. Yes, I, uh, you know, as much as uh, Bloomberg is buying ads, there's a pos and uh, Warren is down to like $3 million, uh, and uh, Amy Kobachar is also down uh, under $3 million as a Trump. war chest. Remember now, you could win an election with that at one time? Go ahead. Right. If Bloomberg gives them money, and keeps them in the race, it could go towards keeping a brokered convention because at that point, if he can, if he finances them, that's going to continue to dilute the field 
for anyone getting. But isn't 19, isn't it a little late for him to do that at this point? Not necessarily. I mean, I mean you got you got Super it. Tuesday. That's after after Super Tuesday. It's going to be a route. Yeah, but know? he 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 can become a pack uh, because and that's what he is. So if he decides not to pull out and to finance those people then that will dilute the number of votes, and then he comes in as a white knight during the convention, uh, a brokered convention, and uh, stands up and takes a uh, take bow. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's what you're playing is the long game, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, I don't know what kind of game he's playing because he's got to know that he is not endearing himself to the American public. As soon as he opened his mouth, he wasn't endearing himself to Well, America. he was, you know, he's... Uh, he look. He, he's a very smart man. Yeah. He's he's a guy who certainly, where finances are concerned, and where the financial wealth of this country is concerned, could probably be very good for us. Okay, uh, unlike Trump, who really is not a real billionaire. He's kind of a billionaire on paper, and everything he has ever done has turned to crap. You know, for the most <laughs> part. I mean, who loses a you know, uh, 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 everybody, uh, even who, Mike Douglas, no, uh, Phil, 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 but no, but this is Donald Trump. This is the guy who has the art of the deal. Who should know how not to lose money running a it, casino. Didn't he sell a couple of those. And it wasn't Mike, Mike Douglas, Douglas either, Phil. Huh? It wasn't Mike Douglas. Uh, the, the talk show host. No, uh, he didn't have Rick. a casino. No, I, I thought I thought Douglas was suing him because he sold him casinos that were no good or something. Oh, oh you mean uh, sued Trump? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember yeah, that. There was some beef between Trump and Mike Douglas because uh, Trump sold, I think he sold him some casinos or he sold him uh, some gaming uh, uh, deal. Uh, uh, it was a very famous gaming stock uh, back in the 80s. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the well, name of it. It's probably the same paper that the diplomas from Trump University were <laughs> written, written on. Shinola. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. Shinola in my hands. Come on. I got Shinola in my hands. I got nothing. I can't get a job with this. You go to McDonald's with it. They lay me out the night. There's a jeans company. I go by the fries and start working. They don't worry about this. Throw it out. <laughs> right. There's a jeans company out of Detroit called Shinola. They yeah. sell it. Yeah, yeah no, they, got, they brought the name Shinola. Yeah. Yeah. So they could uh, name their gene Shinola. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want they didn't want the name to go out of use, as it were. Yeah. So they bought the trademark. Yeah. Huh. What was it originally? Was it a, a, a soda or something? Shinola. Shinola was a, a shoe wax. Really? Oh, Super what? Tuesday's March third. It's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Don't you remember the old saying? Well, I'll say this now because. Yeah, Lord talking. knows, Lord knows that Tony has demonetized me for tonight. Oh, uh, the old term, you don't know shit from Shinola. That's oh. what I wanted to say. Yes, right. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> what happened to uh, Ray? Where did he go? Uh, he went to Shinola. <laughs> Gee. Uh, he stepped away. I would assume. Yeah. I, I guess I I just wonder. I mean, like, are there really people? I mean, if they can say if they are. I don't care. I'm just asking. Are there really people around on the panel or your listeners or whatever that live on sixty, seventy thousand bucks a year, eighty thousand bucks a year as a household or whatever that really think someone like Bloomberg is really going to be looking out for them or really has any kind of a even coherent understanding of what you their know, life I, is I, like? I, I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 especially in comparison to someone like. A Biden or I, someone like a Klobuchar? I can't uh, I answer. Mean, I, I can't scared. answer. I can't answer that for you because um, I, I do agree with you. I don't feel that Bloomberg is necessarily caring about the little guy. By the way, Ray. Yes. What What are you eating there? What What do you have? Is that dinner? Uh, oh, you want to see it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see that. Awesome. It's plant based. Huh? I, I eat based now. Okay. Uh, some uh, of challah bread. Oh, that yeah. looks good. Yeah. And um. Some okay, uh, brown rice and 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 yams and green beans nice. and cauliflower. That looks really. Good. I hate I hate yams, but outside of that, the rest of them I like. It well, it's your, it's yams mixed with carrots. Oh, okay. My wife made. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Uh, 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 so, so I'm eating plant based. I exercise for at least an hour a day. 
I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I still have high cholesterol and high blood pressure and calcium on my heart. I'm just on a complete low-carbohydrate diet, and I'm gaining weight right now. And I think it has to do with the medicine I'm taking for my I, neuropathy. I drink a fair amount of vodka. I take as many Vicodins as I can get my hand on, and I don't have any of those fucking problems. So That's because you're you years old. And a steak every day. <laughs> and a steak every you day. Know, no, I, 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 years. I've been on a pretty strict and low-carb diet, and I've been gaining weight because of this, the, just the various things, the radiation, everything, you know. It's, yeah, it'll do it. Uh, yeah, it'll do it. Wait, catheter in you. Huh? You're not... Yeah. Wait till you get the catheter. Well, I, who knows? I may have one. You never know. If I find I can't pee, I have to rush off to the doctor and have him put one in. But uh, the, uh, uh, I, I don't think that'll happen because I'm taking Flomax, and that makes me go like a racehorse even when... They let you out of there unless you can pee. I know. So, yeah. I had that happen last time. I, do, I told the story, Phil. Yeah, well... You don't listen, you do you? You have to push back. You don't listen to anything I say. I was talking about the fact that when before I left last time, I had to pee. I had to pee this much into the bottle, and you know, I, I'm sorry, I can't even go into a into a cup when they want me to at the urologist. Okay, on cue, I cannot pee that much. I I listen to what you say. I just don't believe it. Oh, okay. But anyway, <laughs> I, I've already gone through that once before. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so I'm, I, I, I'm going to take, I'm probably going to make sure I took take a Flomax before the operation so it's nice and light, you know, and fluffy. Uh, do they want you to take mm -hmm. anything before the operation? Ask them. He's never, he never told me not to. They say take your medicine just like you normally take your medicine. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In fact, Are I, you I, still going to the gym? Huh? Am I still going to the gym? I haven't been to the gym in three months, I think. Yeah. But, I, but I, I intend to go back uh, right after this is all over with. Uh, but I need to get this over with. And then I think I'll be able to. They'll allow me to. Yes, Phil? I, confession. Uh, I, I've been being told by the chiropractor, the rolfer, um, and everyone else, my nutritionist, that i got to get into the gym. So uh, the other day I bought a package of 10 Pilates reformer classes. And I'm going tomorrow morning and Monday. So I'm going on Mondays and Saturdays uh, to, for Pilates Reformer. And Joseph Pilates... Pilates um, is an exercise. It's toning. Uh, it's, it's, well, I need that. You got, no, you have to have it, something to it, tone first, it, Phil. It's, it's, he tones is the steak. It's an important <laughs> exercise. Am I right, Ray? Pilates is toning, right? Well, reformer. it's not cardiovascular unless you do it really fast. Right. No, no it's, it's, still good to, it's still good to, to do toning and exercise uh, your your muscles, when, especially when you get older, because they, they degenerate. Yeah, you'll be roly-poly, but you'll be solid as a rock. Yeah. Actually, you're more flexible. And, and you know, with arthritis yes. and all of those things, I need that flexibility. Uh, today, I had a rolfing session, and this is the first time... That I feel totally normal uh, af after the session, as far as my muscles being able to move and lack of pain. Well, I don't think there's anybody here that will attest to the fact that you're normal. Yeah. <laughs> He's a B normal. More fake news from Bennett. Yeah. You know what I've said? A B normal. Uh, somebody just said here, uh, uh, Forbin Colossus wrote, Pilate is the n latest f uh, from Starbucks. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Actually, Joseph Pilates was a uh, was in a concentration camp and developed the exercises in his bunk, and that's why uh, the Pilates reformer yeah. looks like a, a bunk, and uh, uh, and and that's how he developed. Uh, well, the, the this Pilates. certainly this certainly outdoes Anne Frank, doesn't it? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, she was true. in an attic. She was fucking an attic. No. <laughs> he gave her up to uh, Yeah. Anyway. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens with this, uh, with, the, with the, you know, I just don't, I, I'm not convinced that any of these people are capable of beating Trump, you know. Uh, I mean, I listen to uh, Elizabeth Warren and she goes, I'm the only one that can beat Trump. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Mm -hmm. You really believe that? You know, I mean, um, uh, Biden's got a better chance than she does. Uh, Bernie Sanders thinks he does because he's got all these people showing up for his rallies. But the fact is, he's still only gotten 29% of the Democratic oh, vote. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, which who are going to scatter to the winds if he doesn't run. You know, but he's not building a coalition that's going to go storm the White House, you know. Biden was fact-checked on something he said during the uh, debate. Uh, he said he was arrested when he went to, uh, uh, I forgot where he said he went to, but he said he was arrested. And one of the uh, con uh, people, uh, commentators, said, I was there and nobody got arrested. And, uh, and, and so they fact-checked it, and it turns out that he wasn't telling the truth and he had to walk it back. Okay, let's go over Trump's lies then. No, no, that, no whatabouts. I, I get beat up on this whataboutism all the time. No, but you do it no, all no, the I, time. I'm so. not saying that. I'm saying Biden did Nobody lie. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Now let's go it over some lies. lies. No, but, I'm, but, talking but, about, I'm talking about Biden. Uh, and, if, I, listen, I got, I got to tell you something, Ray. Uh, we can't really go into Trump's uh, lies because it would take us so long that I, we would have to be here for the next 48 hours and then we'd a still have some shows, left over. Exactly. A month's worth of shows, yeah. yeah. You don't think he's a liar, Phil? No. Oh. I Boy. think that... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Phil perfect. Meyer, the dumbest man here. You, you can interpret anything you want any way you want, and if you want to interpret what he hey, says is a lie. Hey, a lie is a lie is a lie, Phil. If you say something and it's not true, it's a lie. There's no squ uh, there's no squirming room. There's no room for what? Is the way you perceive things to be, and you know he's 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 talking about it from his perception. You know, hey, if somebody says that they're a German Shepherd instead of a man or a woman. You know, that's their right to claim that. No, no, but it? then there's no, if you use that as the definition, there's no such thing as lying. That's true. Yes. Except, right. Biden, Except for that, that was, that was a lie. Then Biden didn't lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he had to walk it back. He didn't get arrested. Well, the old man in the uh, mountain said, uh, nothing is true, all is permitted. Yeah, Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I think Trump occasionally doesn't lie. Yeah, yeah I, I think his truth-telling is, yeah. uses the honest by accident. Yeah. Uh, that's Alex's, uh, the clock is right twice a day. Yeah, well, the, the, the old man in the mountain, it was, you know, nothing is true, all is permitted, which when I stop to think about it, if that were the case, then if nothing is true, neither is that statement. So, you know, I guess nothing's permitted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all permitted now. Who 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 you got who who what horse have you got in this race, uh, Ray? I I think I, I think Bernie, but I, I there's part of me that wants to vote for Warren because she seems less divisive. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that really? maybe I found her to could... be absolutely abhorrent at those debates. No, yeah. but I think, well, the debates, I mean, are ridiculous. I think I think that she would be less divisive for the country. I mean, I think she could bring people together together better. I think Bernie would just be divisive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, those are the only two I think who could win at this point. I heard Andrew Yang was being considered as a VP, a possible VP, uh, but of course I, I read which candidate was considering it. Now I can't remember that, which candidate it was. Yeah. But uh, 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 do you mind if I get on with the show, Phil? Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I just I, I was going to go to somebody else and ask them the same question. Uh, 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 Kevin, you, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, who? What horse do you have in this race? Don't have one yet. Really? Anybody you're thinking about? I'm thinking about all of them. I I, I was kind of leaning to Bernie. Now I'm leaning away from him again. Yeah. And if you're leaning away from him, where are you leaning? More towards the uh, middle? Ah, you know, I was on Biden for a while, and then I got away from him. Now I'm kind of leaning back towards him. I don't know. Where does Buttigieg fit in any of this? Buttigieg was in there for a while, and I'm kind of, I don't know. I got a few months to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not in any hurry. Well, there is a. Well, wait a minute. There's a primary in California on Tuesday. Super yeah, Tuesday. but I, I'm an independent, so nothing shows up oh, on my. I already. Oh, oh, you can't. Yeah, 
I yeah, can't. Nothing I can't. Shows up I, on my ballot. I, I, I've already voted. I can't vote. I in wrote. The I wrote in Jesse Ventura. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't vote in the primaries either because I'm an independent, and there's no independent primary. Some states uh, with the independent uh, allowed uh, all the presidential candidates on there. You I, we I, cross I, over, but you have to re, you have to re uh, register. Oh, I remember we did once, Phil, in California for one voting cycle. They they yeah. changed it. Yes, you can cross over, and if you want to go Republican, Republican or uh, I got to remember, there's seven different things you can do this year, um, and I got to remember them because I'm working the polls. If you're nonpartisan, you can you can cross over to the left and do the 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 four on the left, the mm -hmm. Democratic, Green, uh, and a few other of the parties. If you're uh, nonpartisan. You have to totally re-register uh, for a Republican, yeah. and the others on the right. Yeah. But you, then, then you have to re-register again after if you want to go back. Yeah. So been, you can do all this weird crap now, and yeah. totally. But you have to do constantly be re-registered. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've all. By the way, they. I just looked here. They've already demonetized my show. Oh, wait a minute. What Didn't is that? Take long. <laughs> what? Didn't, Didn't take, take long. long. They did it to the live program. Hey, why don't you try the seven-second thing and get a uh, you know get a buzzer? No, I found you know I found I could come here read nursery rhymes for an hour and I would get demonetized. Well, that's because the nursery rhymes are copyrighted. No, they're not. No, they're not. Grim. But you know, I mean, you know, what what have we said tonight? Come on. A few little words got here out here and there. Why All it takes is for one person to complain. There could be like a right wing. No, there's no complaining. I think it's the politics is what I think you is don't, doing. You don't That's what I mean. choose this. You don't choose the advertisers, do you? No, but it, oh, it, it has I got to. The Epoch Times before I signed on today. Oh, I saw oh, Steyer. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah, Epoch yeah. Times. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Maybe another way you can monetize is if somebody uses a curse word. They have to send money into Capnet. It could be. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, and, and they I, still I run. Think about that. Oh. I thought about that too. Yeah, like a curse jar. You know, where you put the money in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. So, did you find yourself a, a place to stay for the night, um, Bree? Yeah. Nice. This, uh, it's a little dicey. It's a, they're doing some construction down there, but they said that it would only be 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., so I can live with that. And they upgraded me from a standard to a uh, King Deluxe. A uh, King so, Deluxe. Okay. Yeah, so it's a much bigger bed. Uh, last night I was on a twin, and at home I have a California King, so I'm just used to that. This one is definitely bigger, and it's right near the entertainment district. Oh, so, okay. Uh, it will be good. Good, because uh, yeah. as we all know, uh, Singapore is going to be hopping tonight what with that virus going around. <laughs> which, which country is it? Well, Chew gum and spit it on the sidewalk at Kane. Singapore. 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 Yeah. yeah. I saw when he was taking pictures of the sidewalk, I saw uh, stuff on the sidewalk. Uh, what's that? That's it's my anti antibacterial hand spray, which I will use. And I have to meet an old colleague and friend over here for lunch in a bit. Yeah, I mean, there's people, look, people do stuff. Last night, I, I well, I may have. I'm not admitting to this. Mm -hmm. I jaywalked, I spit, and I did something else. Oh, open container, uh, I think. Maybe. I'm just not saying, but hypothetically. They're very strict. Uh, I may there. even have gum in my pack. Go ahead, Alan. But, you know. Don't they cut your hands off if you litter there? They cane you. No, they cane you. I would never litter. You. I would never litter. That, that so, yeah, I know, but it. don't they have rules like that? Yeah. Oh, they have a lot of rules. Yeah, they'll fine you for everything. Yeah. They're very, they're very strict there, but they, the streets are clean, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, the streets are clean. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Earlier, when Bree's camera was pointing at the sidewalk, I saw debris on the sidewalk. I, uh... You know, I don't know about that, but that, that, that looks pretty I'll clean to me. I'll give you a here in a minute, uh, just as we're almost. I'll show you the uh, casino, MBS Casino, and onto the Marina Bay. 
Uh, I wish that, uh, you know, you were on at night because, or in the morning there, because uh, the night is really excellent in this uh, in this part. Of- yeah. Is that Casino Trump property? Look at that. No traffic. Look at that. No traffic. Wow. You're seeing these pictures. I, by, uh, the way, by the way, folks, if you're, if you're listening to us, you're, you're seeing pictures live from Singapore, which is... Uh, is a place where they've got the outbreak. Yes. I'm going out of my way to give you this shot. I'm going out of the way to give you this shot because i got to actually head back the other direction for lunch. Yeah. But if I memory serves me correctly. There we go. There's some traffic. Uh, this is the Ministry of Communication over here, Alex. They would be in charge of monetizing, you know, monitoring your show. Oh. And uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Very nice. That's the Parliament, old Parliament, and MBS. And 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 straight and, women. And, wait a minute, hold on a second. And straight across, isn't that isn't aren't those three buildings that are the big buildings that, um, uh, they look like they're, those are big office buildings, aren't they? Those with this where yeah. they're hooked together. The hotel, office building, retail, casino. What's on the table? Hmm? Wow. Wow. Something on the top, like a roof that covered all three. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. But I yeah. don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, well, we're getting close to the end of it here. Uh, not uh, completely, but uh, I'm not going to be on on Tuesday uh, because I'm having my procedure. Uh, um, I'll be in Spain. Huh? I'll be in Spain. Oh, you'll be in Spain. Oh, you lucky bastard, you. Yeah. Rain in Spain. <laughs> Why are you well, going to Spain? Well, I'll, I'll be going again in May, so I'll be going again in May for a longer visit, so we can... Uh, oh, uh, your sound is just making too much noise, Bree. Yeah. Uh, you need one of those foamy things yeah. that go over. Well, if, you, if, if you're going to be around on, on Wednesday, I might do a show Wednesday, but I'm not sure. But... Uh, I will definitely not be doing, and and we probably next week will be trying this going on at uh, ten thirty deals. So you don't have to start listening to me till eleven if I have an interview going. So, and yeah. it's fill free Wednesday. It's fill free Wednesday. Yeah. Oh well, I won't be here Wednesday. I might be here Wednesday, and I might not. But you might, you know. But everybody, I'll be, be working the polls on Tuesday. Really good for you, Kevin. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. There's a a true patriot at work. You're gonna be top. You're gonna be topless, Kevin. No, that'll scare him away. Oh, working the oh, polls. I, you were working the polls. I, I say okay. working the oh, polls. Oh, those polls. No, no. no. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, That'd really, you know, be scary. Um, we. Uh, it's uh, look at that. What, oh what wow. Not moving anywhere. Uh, there we go. Well, it's uh, somebody. They just died of the coronavirus, and they're just sitting there. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's live from Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know something? My throat is starting to get scratchy. Uh-oh. Yeah, my voice. You know, I want to get the coronavirus by, don't even want to by the watching house. video of coronavirus infested cities. <laughs> anyway, breathe. Be Drink good. Some tea at Theraflu. That's what I've been doing. So yeah. Why does Singapore yeah. look like The Walking Dead? There are no people around. Right. Oh, someone. Well, no, but no, it's, yeah, it's de- very. I got to tell you, they're definitely staying home. You know. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's because of the coronavirus. Huh? It, yeah. It, 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 well, they're for all. And also, it's very hot outside. That's one of the big cities for the coronavirus. I mean, Bree is doing on a dangerous mission here tonight. Uh, anyway, I'm a correspondent for Gabnet. Thanks. Yeah, I thought they're all listening to Gabnet. That's why they were inside at their computer. Thanks, Bree. I appreciate it. Thank you very much to yeah. to Jeff and Phil and Josh and uh, to uh, Kevin and to uh, our good friend uh, 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 Tony and also to Ray uh, for being part of our citizens panel for tonight. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye. And I will wave back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, I'm going to hang up on them now so that the next person who is in here, which is Jack Bishop, can use the, uh, um, use the Skype lines for his fine program, The Intersection, which is next, or most of the same gabnet. 
I'll see you again, maybe, maybe, uh, come, uh, let's see here, come uh, Wednesday. If not Wednesday, Thursday. If not Thursday, Friday. If not Friday, the following week. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll let you know online. In the meantime, uh, I got to go and make way for Jack Bishop. Uh, and uh, wish you all a very happy weekend and hope you have a good time with whatever you're going to do. Please don't get the coronavirus because I need every viewer I can possibly get. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.